Guys, I want to welcome you to tonight's uh, webinar. We're so excited. You know, today is December 29th, Monday, December 29th, and I'm just flat out excited about the International Flight Campaign. I'm so committed to each and every one of you staying consistent and continuing to get on these webinars. We want to thank each and every one of you for your consistency, and guys, I'm telling you, it will pay off. The key to this business is consistency. So having said that, we're going to uh, quickly uh, touch on a few things. Like I told you, if you haven't been added to the uh, Facebook page, please uh, send me a message, and we want to add you. If you have uh, team members, but we will confirm it with the with the list. And once you've been confirmed, uh, that's a great way we can communicate with you. If you add people to the business or you've had success, guys, we want to hear about it. So please share that. Also, again, the team website. We have a YouTube page where the videos are being uploaded, and you can see all the videos. Um, having said that, guys, we're going to get in touch on today's webinar. I want to cover something real quick that I think is really essential to your success. And most people don't understand or don't believe that they have a story. And how I'm going to do tonight's webinar is what I want to do is I want to share with you a story. The book I'm coming out of is a book called The Residual Millionaire. And I'm going to uh, cover this story for a second, uh, but in doing so, I think this would be essential because what I want you to understand that we're professional storytellers. And a lot of times, if you really want to get people to connect with you, if you really want to get people to uh, really take a look at what you're doing, sometimes we have to share with people our story or we have to begin to tell other people's story. And as you do that, you'll find that you're able to be able to pique more people's interest and get more people really interested in what you're doing. And so what I want to do is just share a, a real brief part of the, the author's story. This book is by Steve Fisher. It's called The Residual Millionaire. It's a book that I'm reading. And it's a really good book, but it, it prompted me as I was reading this book to say, you know what, I really, I know this, but I need to share this with the, the team. And so what he says is when I first got involved with network marketing, I was 27 years old. I was working for American Airlines. And he says that um, what happened was, uh, his brother worked for Delta. He was someone I had a lot of respect for. He called me one day and said, listen, I want you to come to a business presentation with me tonight. And what the author goes on to say was he never had done anything like that before. So I actually remember being very excited. They even invited me. So when he picked me up at 6 o'clock, we drove to Fort Worth for a 7 o'clock presentation. Because of my respect for my brother, I didn't even ask any questions. On the way down to the meeting, he said, I don't know who's doing the presentation tonight. I don't know who else is going to be in the room, but I don't want you to pay attention to anything, any of that. All I want you to do is look at the numbers and tell me if it makes sense to you. If so, let's build a business together. It's a good thing he said that because it was absolutely the worst presentation I've ever seen, and it was also a pretty rough crowd. However, I paid attention to the numbers, and the business did make sense. I remember being extremely excited and thinking this was going to be easy. I signed up on the spot, and I told my brother, I'm going to kill this business. I will sign up 10 people this week. And immediately, I thought of 10 people I just knew would sign up with me. On the way home, I went and uh, one of my buddies who was an air traffic controller, I knew he was, uh, and his wife stayed up late. So anyway, I went to their house, showed them the plan, and they got started. After two hours of going through the information, they got started. But anyway, he goes on to say this. Six months later, I signed up my second associate. Now, I have to tell you, it was a tough six months. The first person I sponsored, and he went on to say this guy went on to sponsor like 89 people. But imagine you signing up one person, and you got a sponsor, but this person that you sign up goes on and brings in 89 people. Now, think about our business. You at least had to have three in order to get coded bonus. You at least had to have three. But it took this gentleman six months to get a second person. And he talks about how, uh, the, anyway, I'm just going to paraphrase. He said that he went on to say that, um, that it was a, 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 one of the top leaders coming in town, and he got geeked up and excited. And uh, he invited like 35 people. He had 15 people. I mean, he talked to you over and over and over again. And they all said that they were coming. He said, uh, but he talked to the leader and said, this is my night. And the guy said, well, listen, you know, I don't want you to set your expectation just in case they don't show up. He said, no, they're going to show up. And he got disappointed. And when they didn't show up, he said that he quit. But the next day when he went to work and he was looking at the person, he was so upset. The person said, listen, we really wanted to come, but we couldn't make it. Um, is there a way you can come by and show me my wife? And he said, although he quit, he, someone told him on the inside, go. He showed him the plan, and they signed up. Somebody else called him and said, hey, look, you know, we, we weren't able to make it, but we really are interested. 
And he went by a shooting program, and they signed up. He finally had his third person guy see unlock the compensation plan, and he says he went on to make over a million dollars in that business. He shared this with me because here's what he said. Um, he began, as he began to share a story, I began to really understand that it wasn't easy, and a lot of times people, they don't necessarily know the story. They see the glory, but they don't know the story. Now, what's the purpose of me sharing this tonight? Each of you have a story. Some of you are just you're writing it. Some of you have been in the industry for a minute. And some of you, guess what you're going through the process. But you have to get good at telling your story. And so what is your story? That's the question you see on the screen. Like I said, this won't take long. I want to cover this because I need each of you, your assignment is to write out your story. And you're going to get really good at telling your story. You're also going to get good at telling other people's story. Whether it's Shanaza, Donald Bradley, Mark Sterling, Trey Harris, you know, your sideline partners. You're going to find that. You hear this, facts tell, but stories sell. So your story is what connects you with people. Your story is what connects your audience with you. And guys, what I need you to understand is you'll be willing to share your challenges and shortcomings um, as well as preconceived notions. Meaning, when you share with people where you was and why you saw the business, then what you'll begin to understand is that's what's going to make them relate to you. A lot of times I know that we peak interest. I know a lot of times we say show the plan, we do the three phone call. But a lot of times you have to get good. And, and everything that we've told you to this point is 100% true. See, see, Jason, what I understand is you, you got to be able to share your story. You may say, well, shit, I had made a lot of money. That's not the point. The, the point is you got to be able to share your story. See, when you share your shortcomings with people, you empower them. You know, a lot of times people just want to talk about the great success. You know, I see Diamond Jackie Pippins on, on, the, on the call. And, you know, again, guys, she knows 100% of this, but she's still on. But, see, guys, you got to tell your story. If you ever hear her share her story about how, you know, when she was in corporate America, and, and I'm not going to really, yeah, I could tell her story, but I, I use her story all the time. I, I, I tell people I got a business partner, and, you know, uh, uh, she inspires me because, you know, she, she's doing this business for her time freedom. You know, when her father, who raised her, and her, her brothers and sisters, he raised them. You know, when she needed, he needed the most. Like so many people, she worked a corporate job, she wanted to perform, and, and, and when he was on his, you know, deathbed, she got a call, and, and her job frowned upon her leaving. Well, guys, she, you know, she didn't go, and, and unfortunately, her dad passed. And so what happened was, guys, you know, she, she just felt horrible. And, and she said she got exposed to network marketing later on. But you know what expired her? She wanted freedom of time. She didn't want nobody else to put her thumb, their thumb on her neck and tell her what she couldn't be. You know, see, people can relate with that. See, see now they want to come meet Jackie Pippins. I, I could tell Shanaza's story, and I don't have to give every detail. I think you know, think so much you got to tell about all these figures. But, guys, what you got to be able to do is tell people's story. That's what makes people want to come here. You know, uh, I, I was listening, um, and a lot of people, they, they, they share my story. This gentleman used to wait tables, and he used to work in restaurants he couldn't afford to eat at, but now this company's paying him over five figures a month. So you don't have to get caught up in, oh, he, no, can you tell a story? Now, having said that, what I want you to do is I want you, I'm going to give you a couple bullet points, and this is one of the first things I want to cover, and I got one more thing I want to cover. So when you share your success, I told you, 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 you impress people. You know, it's great when this person, oh, they made over 20000 That's That's impressive. It's great when, oh, Mr. Bradley makes 60000 That's impressive, guys. But that's not what makes people really want to relate with you. Sometimes they'll think, well, I can't do that. But you got to be able to tell the story. And, Ms. Holton, this is what I understand empowers people. So I think I said this, Ms. Hughes. Each of you got to get good at sharing and learning your story. You have a story. We will help you frame it. But what your homework assignment is, Mona, I need you to write out your story. Because once you begin to get your story, you're going to tell it over and over and over. You're going to also tell other people's story. And you're going to find more and more people becoming attracted to your business. So having said that, let me give you your assignment. This is how you're going to come up with your story. How do you tell your story? What I want you to write down is this. Where was you when you first saw the business? Meaning, were you a person that was looking for opportunity? Maybe you was a person that was skeptical. You know, you just didn't do those type of things. You, you said no to network marketing. If that's your story, you got to tell that. If you're the type of person that, you know, you, you got exposed at an early age and you saw people making a lot of money, you need to tell that. If you were a type of person, you was just busy, you didn't have a chance to put nothing else on your, on your plate, that's a part of your story. You got to be able to tell that. See, people need to know where was you when you first was exposed to the business. 
What you heard that guy say was, guess what? He really respected his brother. He had never done anything like that before. So when he called him, he was excited. Maybe somebody you called, you respected called you. So because you knew of their track record of success, you listened to what they shared. I don't know. Maybe it was a friend that called you from college or high school. I don't know how you heard about the business. But that's what you got to be able to share. First point. Number two, why did you look at it? I mean, some people looked at it because they were trying to get somebody off their back. Some people looked at, looked at the business because who, who asked you? Some people looked at it, they, they saw an ad or, or, or you was at an event or somebody invited you to a travel party. How did, how did you, I mean, where was you at mentally? But number two, why did you take a look at the business? Now, if you've ever heard me share my story, I did have a friend, I had an event planning company. A friend of mine, her name was Lolita, but a friend of mine, uh, she told me next time I'm, I'm booking travel, if her prices were the same or better, would I give her a chance to earn her business because she earned my business? And again, the truth is, I told her yes. You know, I wasn't traveling, but I told her sure. Well, guys, little did I know. And if you ever hear me share my story, you'll hear me say this all the time. And I don't really remember, honestly, if it was three months, four months. I really don't remember. But the point of the matter is I did get a phone call. My aunt asked me to help plan the family reunion. Ding, ding, ding. See, guys, when I share that, people, it clicks. Now, they may not have, but I'm, I'm telling, how did I get to this point? How did I even hear about the business? So what happened was I got a call from my aunt, and she asked me to help plan the family reunion. The light bulb went off. I may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but, guys, I called my friend back, and I said, how do I? Remember that business you told me about? She said, well, yeah, how do I do it? Honestly, guys, she didn't recruit me. People said, how did you hear about it? She didn't, nobody recruited me. I called her and said, and she invited me to a meeting. At that meeting, guess what? I did meet Donald Brad. At that meeting, I did meet Spencer Adams. At that meeting, I met a gentleman named Floyd Williams. They were doing the presentation when I was first exposed. And they was making a lot of money. But that I already made in my mind I was going to join. Now, I don't tell what I'm saying. I don't have to give every detail. But what you do have to understand is you have a story. You have to be able to tell your story. Now, listen, why did the business make sense to you? You know, here's what I tell people. When I saw it, I recognized people were going to fly on planes, stay in the hotels, rent cars, and cruise. I figured some smiles going to get paid. It might as well be me. Guys, why did you get started? Was it just to get your friend off your back? Was it you saw a trip on the screen and, and you realized you took that same trip? W what was your reason? Maybe you saw a lot of people make a lot of money. I don't know, but tell your story. And last but not least, I don't have it on here, but tell what your expectation. Tell what you believe is going to happen. You know, guys, because of this business, I, I'm excited because I believe that in the next 18 months, I'll be able to retire and do this full time. Really? You know, because this business, I'm, I'm confident that over the next 12 to 24 months, I'll be able to make a six-figure residual. See, tell your story. And, guys, when you can package that, guess what? It's used to say it the same every time. Every time, your story. So now when you talk to people that you don't have a relationship with, when you talk to people that you do, all you're doing is telling your story. And you get good at telling your story, and you'll find out that people are going to let you come to a presentation. Now, you may say, shut the code up, slow down. So I should be telling them all this? Let me make sure you understand. When you're on the call to set an appointment, you're going to be in a hurry. You're going to show the value. You're going to take it away. But, guys, I'm going to promise you, if you're going to get people to connect with you, if you're going to get people to join you, you're going to have to tell your story. That may be your partner presentation. Let's say we're doing what's called field training, and I'm going out with Michelle Anderson. And me and Michelle, uh, she sets up the appointment, and, and she doesn't give a presentation over the phone. She just piques the interest, and she says, listen, I'm involved with a project, but I, I, I'm supposed to be training and." And I need your help. And they say, sure. You say, she says, well, you and your husband be home. And they say, yes. Well, we get ready to go over there. She's got to tell her story. See, her telling her story is going to set up when I begin to do the presentation. Guys, what I'm telling you is this is what's going to get people to really take a look at your business, in addition to the things we've trained you on. So that's your homework assignment. Your homework assignment is begin to tell your story. Now, guys, listen to me. I'm going to ask each of you to write out your story. And I want you to send it to me. You're going to send it to Vacation Diamond Team. I really want you to write it out. This is your homework assignment. I'm going to help you edit it. And when I say edit it, not necessarily grammatically, I'm going to help you frame it. And I'm going to send it back to you. And I'm going to show you how to really tell your story. So that's your homework assignment. Your homework assignment is write out your story. And then when you write out your story, send it to me, Vacation Diamond Team. I'm going to go through everybody who sends it. I'm going to go through and help them rearrange it to make sure it's really impactful. So guess what? You can have bang as you tell your story. Because here's what you're going to understand. Facts tell story sale. It's your story. 
So you want to share, you want to share your success story and inspire people. Now, here's what it says. Don't hyper over sensationalize it, guys. Don't try to um, over sensationalize it. Don't try to make it seem too good to be true. Just tell your story. Now, having said that, that's the first thing I want to cover. That I just want to quickly go over that. That was the first part. The second part, I'm going to quickly transition is, let's see, I got a text message, so make sure you can still hear me. The second part I want to cover real quick is this. I want to talk to you about travel parties, and I'm going to do this real quick. This ain't going to be long at all. The importance of travel parties, I want to talk to you about this. Now, having said that, I'm just going to hit a couple hot points because I want each of you also to prepare to do more travel parties. So, having said that, I'm going to actually go to a Word document. So give me one second to change out the screen. And Tequila, this is going to be really fun to me. I, I think that sometimes we think people notice information and they don't. So what I'm going to do real quickly is this document will be uploaded on the site, but I'm going to cover it uh, on the screen. So let me make sure you can see it. Uh, show screen. Show screen. Okay, thank you. The email address is Vacation Diamond Team. That's the email address um, that you have. I need to make sure that you guys can see uh, the travel. Okay, there it is. It came up. Now, all I'm going to do is go over this real quick. What I do with everybody who's brand new, I don't care how long you've been in the business. I don't care um, if you just got started. It's so important that you understand this. Weekly meetings will build your team. So I believe in weekly meetings. We encourage people to come to the weekly meetings. We encourage you, if you can do one thing by being consistently, keep coming to the weekly meetings. We encourage that. Some of you are in places that there's not a consistent weekly meeting. But I want to really help you understand the importance of travel parties. I'm just going to go over this document. I'm not going to do a PowerPoint. I'm going to go over this document. And guys, this is actually, uh, I'm going to change out the, the title and label and put the ISC logo on it. But this is the same thing. I'm going to take this document and put it on the website so you'll have it and you can review it. Now, I'm just going to read. Um, when, when I bring a brand new person in, I go over this document with them. Once we go over the basic stuff, Vernon, I'm going to use my friend Vernon Ad Adamson. So I'm going to make sure that he understands that, okay, we did his list, we created his list, we did the top 40, we did all that. But now what are we going to invite them to? We're going to have a travel party. Now listen, is everybody going to make his travel party? Absolutely not. But we are going to invite interested people to his travel party. So, okay, let me come back on this. Here's what I want to cover. Now, philosophy and instructions. I'm going to just kind of read. Listen, Vernon, we're really excited that you decided to become a part of vacation. Listen, we're excited. We want to work to the team. We're truly excited to help you launch as well as grow your business. Now, whether you want to just be a CTC, you want to book travel, or you want to build a team, you're in the right place at the right time. Now, like any business, we need to get the word out. We need to help promote and market your business. Now, nobody's going to walk up to you and say, did you, you look travely? Did you just purchase a travel business? If no one knows, if we don't tell anybody, they won't know. Now, why am I saying this? This is what I tell people because I'm encouraging them to do. You say, well, how do you get people to do a travel party? Whether they want to just book travel or whether they want to build a team, guys, nobody's, they got to market their business. If nobody knows they're in business, they can't get any business. And if you explain that, that makes sense, right? So when you share that with people, that's the first point. You want to let them know, listen, we need to have a grand opening. A grand opening. See, you just start, we need to have a grand opening. So when a person joins, don't just say to have a travel party. If you don't take the time to explain what it is you're doing, you'll find out that rules without relationship equals rebellion. People are not going to do it just because you say you need to do a travel party. you got to explain the purpose of the travel party. Why are we doing this? So that's why I'm going over this with you. So point number two. A travel party is, is a festive fun event, usually hosted at your home or your clubhouse. We can do it at the back office of a restaurant. 
you, but this is where you're going to invite family, friends, colleagues, church members to come celebrate as well as learn about your new business. At this event, we will have light refreshments. Guys, we're going to have fun, games, prizes. Uh, we could do a theme. But it's going to, the main focal point is a 30 to 45 minute presentation that will take place. So, again, I set the theme of what it is. I told them what it is. And I'm telling them, you know, what's going to take place. Now, let's quickly go over guest list. Fernand, imagine you're having a bachelor party or Christmas or New Year's Eve party, a baby shower, any monumental event that you desire to celebrate. Who would you invite? Now, see, we already had him do his list, but now I'm saying who would you invite? Who's going to be your VIP on your guest list? Likewise, we're going to have your grand opening for your travel business. Therefore, we want to create a guest list. So if you're following me, what's the first one? We want to help him create a guest list. We're going to set a date, but we need him to set a guest list. So many people, they don't invite enough people, and I'm jumping ahead. So the question is, who would you invite? Now, Vernon, we're going to use a memory jogger. Just like we help you create the list, we're going to use a memory jogger. We want to remind you of people to whom you have a strong relationship with, your family, your friends, your family, your loved ones. See, Linda, we want to help people who you don't love to travel. We're going to invite people from your church, people who need extra stream. We're going to invite a lot of people to your travel party. Now, having said that, people who need tax breaks, again, we're showcasing your travel business. So we want to take time to reflect who you would you want to tell about your new business. Who would you want to invite or celebrate in this auspicious occasion? So we need to create a guest list today. Now, you see it in bold? It says, forward me a copy of your guest list to your sponsor, your success coach. If I'm going this over with Tawana, if I'm going over this with Vernon, I'm expecting him. I'm saying, you got to send me a copy of your guest list. What I'm going to tell you what I don't do is two reasons. Number one, as your sponsor, success coach, I'm going to help you confirm interested prospects and build a rapport with them. So what do I mean? If you got this guest list and you invited these people before the event, I'm going to call on your behalf and say, hey, listen, I'm, 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 I'm confirming uh, you're on, v on Vernon's VIP list. I'm confirming this list and, you know, just want to make sure that he has enough refreshments. Hey, we're looking forward to seeing you. Do you, ha are you just want to confirm how many people you're bringing? I'm doing that. And then secondly, I believe never expect what you're not willing to inspect. It's amazing to me how many people have people say, I'm doing a travel party. Would you come? And they never inspect it. I need to see your guest list. I need to know that you did your work. Because everybody wants to say, shut it, I, want, I got this travel party, can you come? Hold up, hold up. You want me to come and take some out of my schedule, but you haven't done your part. So let's quickly move on. Now, pre-exposing. Now that you've created your guest list, we, again, you create your guest list, we want to invite them. You saw this earlier. Get organized. Set aside schedule time to make your calls. Know who you're calling. Be excited and share with them why you get, remember I told you your story? Share with them why you got involved in your story. But be in a hurry, show value, take it away. Use the tools to assist you with peak interest. What do I mean? You got your guest list, but I might, I might still have them listen to the little short three-minute sizzle call. So people say, hold on, shut up. Am I inviting them or am I having them listen to something? I'm having them listen to something. I'm picking an interest, and then the interested people I'm inviting to my travel party. Do you understand that? See, your mindset or attitude is, listen, understand these are people that you know. Please understand this. These are not strangers. And I think this is what hinders most people from doing a travel party. For some reason, unless you tell them, they think that they got to invite strangers to their home. And they're not inviting strangers to their home. This is a relationship business. We hadn't talked about cold market prospecting. I'm going to bring Jackie Pippa on, not today, but I'm going to bring her on to do a training just on that, how to build, uh, uh, to build in the cold market, how to meet people and turn strangers into friends. I mean, we're going to teach you that. But right now, I need you to understand when you start, you should be starting with your, with your warm market. You should be starting with people that you know. You're not inviting strangers to your home. This is where you live. This is where your children live. And once people kind of get that fear out their head, they, they find that they go ahead and like, okay, wow. But if you don't tell them that, you just think they know they don't. They, you, they, you never want them to assume, but they do. And you'll have so many people bucking, well, I, I don't know anybody. I can't. I don't want to do it here. Why? But you got to tell them, we're not talking about strangers. Twana, we're not inviting strangers to your home. No, these are people that you know. You're simply asking them to support you. You're asking them to come take a look at what you're doing. You're asking them to, you know, it's your job to convey how important this is to you. So let's go ahead. Now, these are your friends. So it's okay to put a little pressure on them. What do I mean? Because they're your friends, please understand this, guys. You are a great friend. To, you, you go to your, your people's uh People have graduations and they invite you, you go support. 
They have special events, birthday parties. You go and support. They have other festivities, church events, and you go and support. Now that you're doing something, why should you not have the same expectation that, listen, I'm, I need you to come and support me? So you'll see it says your posture, your outlook is, listen, this is the key. When it says you can add a little pressure to your prospect, these are your friends. You're asking them to come support you, to come take a look at what you're doing. Now, understand, because these are your friends, your family, your coworker, you got to talk directly to them. You can't be fake and phony. You can't. you got to be able to talk to them and invite them. See, guys, if you've ever had a baby shower before, you've done this. If you've had a birthday party, you've done this. What did you do? You made a guest list. You didn't just invite off the top of your head. You made a list. You prepared. It's the same thing. So guess what? You lean on your relationships. You're asking your friends. You're inviting them to your event, and you're asking them to support you. You're asking for the same support in return. Guess what? If I went, came to your events, I'm expecting you to come to my eyes. So listen to me. When you invite to your travel party, your posture is, I need you to know, this, let me read, they need to know that you don't want their support, that you need their support. See, see, if Jackie's my sister, I'm telling her, Jackie, I need you to be here on Saturday. It's a difference. I'm not saying, oh, can you come? These are my friends. I'm saying, I need you to be here. As a matter of fact, I got one of the top leaders coming in, and, and, and they're helping me. They're doing a presentation, and I can't have this place. And I need you to be here. See, I'm not. this not non-negotiable. You, my friend, I got the right to expect you to support me. Because if you, well, I'm going to jump ahead. Let me come down here. So this is an example uh, of an invitation. I'm going to say, hey, Mona, how you doing? Hey, listen, Saturday, uh, what, what are you doing in, uh, about noon? Hey, listen, I need you to come by the house. You and your husband, I'm, I'm having a... I just launched my own uh, business. I'm so excited. I'm having my grand opening. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, we're going to have prizes and giveaways. But listen, I need, you to, I need you to come out and support me. It would mean the world to me if you and your husband would come out and support me. You might even see this is something you want to do yourself. But listen, if, if I met with any resistance, well, shut up. I don't. See, I asked her up front what was she doing. She already told me. So I'm telling her, listen, I need you to come by the house. I need you all to come by. You know? Now, if I met with any resistance, well, I don't, I know somebody who did something like that. This ain't, mm -mm. they haven't seen it, but if they say something like that, I don't have the money, I'm not interested in one of those things, you cannot back down in your posture. You can't say, okay, no, 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 you got to say, listen, I need your support. I need you to come support me. You know, you're my friend, and it's important to me that you understand what I'm doing. If it doesn't make sense to you, you don't got to join. You ain't got to purchase anything you don't want to. I ain't said it ain't going to person. I said you ain't got a person that you don't want to. But it's important to me that you understand what I'm doing. Listen, I need, 30, I need an hour of your time. Because if you ask me, I would do it for you. Ooh, that one's good, guys. You got to be able to tell them, if you ask me, I would do it for you. See, what I'm, what I'm really trying to get you to understand is your posture. See, a lot of you, you're not getting people to come or you say, I sent out an invitation. That's not a, that's You didn't invite nobody. Let me, let, me, let me just quickly go through this because I don't jump ahead. I, I get so excited about this. But again, these are your friends, your family, your coworkers. So let them know you need their support. Be direct. Be sincere. Talk from your heart. Don't sound scripted. But listen, guys, you should not be scared to ask these people who are your friends and your family to come take a look. Now, should you expose them before they come? Yes. What do I mean? It's nothing wrong for you to send them when they say they're coming to send them a link to your site and say, take a look at this. It's nothing wrong with you inviting them to listen to a civil call. It's nothing wrong with you taking them on a test drive. You may say, well, shut it. No, I'm going to let the presentation, but I don't want this to be their first exposure. So I pre-expose the people I'm inviting to my home. Now, I got this long list of names. I got a long list of names. So I'm inviting more than three or four people. That's the problem. A lot of, a lot of times, we don't invite enough people, and then we wonder why we don't get the, the you know. Now, listen to me. If, if you're so lucky, like Donald's my personal sponsor. So if I ask Donald, he, I don't need him, but if I ask Donald to come do my presentation, you best believe Donald ain't coming to no empty house. G, a lot of people say, well, Jackie, I'm, I'm going to bring some people together when you come. So you want Jackie to get a plane ticket. You want her to get on a plane and come, and you ain't did your part? You, I mean, think about what we're asking people to do. I want you to come and, and do my travel party. No, no, you got to have an expectation. you got to invite a lot of people. So we strongly encourage you to utilize the tools. Yeah, I can have you listen to a three-minute sizzle call. Why? I want to pique your interest. Yeah, I, I'm inviting you to come. I'm telling you I need your support. But at the same time, I want you to be interested. Why? Let's go, let's go a little bit further. And you know I'm going to open up for questions, so I'm just touching this real quick. Uh, why? If, if you expose your picture, if, if I expose you to the, to, to the tool, 
And you say, well, you know what? I know somebody who did that. That's not for me. If you look at something, if you get on the call and you're not interested, I'm okay with that. But for the most part, I might send you a, a, I might send you a, a little, a, a, once you tell me you're coming, I might send you an invitation that shows you a, a, a fam trip to Dubai. You'd be amazed at all the stuff that you can do, and we'll talk about that. But the greatest thing that could happen is you get somebody who tells you, mm, I'm not interested, after they sing something. Please understand, after they sing something. See, Baron, they had to see something first. They had to, I had to show them something first. Then if they've seen it and, 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 and they decide not to come because they're not interested, I'm okay with that. Why? Because what I don't want to do is waste their time or minds. Now, this is the part I need to just make sure I slow down so you really understand what I'm saying. I got this list of names. These are people who are near and dear to me. I just got started my business. I'm relaunching my business. I'm acting like I started over. So I did my list. I got 100 names plus. I graded my list. Now, there's some people who live local. There's some people who are on my list that live in another state. There's some people who, you know, so based on the people I have a relationship with, if I have a relationship with you, I might need you to see it. So I'm inviting these people who've been to my house before I have a relationship with strong enough that I don't mind them coming. I'm not inviting strangers to my home. I'm inviting people I have a relationship with to my home. So this is my grand opening, and I'm telling them, hey, listen, I just relaunched my business. So I'm starting my business. I want you to come take a look at it. What if I invited you before you didn't come? I'm inviting you again. This is my relaunch. Oh, you ain't seen nothing like this. Oh, my God, it's going to be amazing. I don't care if you told me in the past and you ain't never seen it. I'm going to invite you. But if you've seen it, unless something changed, I'm okay with you not coming. So my point is I piqued your interest. I sent you a little, I sent you to my site. I took you on a test drive. I, I walked you through. I, I exposed you to the business. And you say I'm not interested. That's the greatest thing that can happen. Why? Because I don't want to waste your time or mine. What I don't want to do is have a room of 20 interested people and I got this one negative apple that they 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 they, they going to be scoffing and mocking and they're going to make my event that's a success. I don't want that negative person in the group. So what I'm saying is the quicker I can discover if they're interested or not, the better. If I put them on the sizzle call and I say, well, would you like best boat you saw? Remember that question from last? They said, well, I like, I like the uh, factor residual income. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being I'm interested. See, now I'm inviting them to that travel party. But I am trying to pique their interest ahead of time. Now, listen to me. I can invite my best friend to come, but prior to them coming, I'm going to say, hey, do me a favor, take a look at my site. I'm not so much concerned. See, what I don't want you to think is, okay, well, shut up. So I have to have them look at something before I invite them to my home. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you might invite them to your home, but before they come, I want them to have looked at something. I want them to have listened to the sizzle call. I'm not pressuring them, but I'm going to send it to them and say, hey, do me a favor before you come today, take a look at this. Hey, do me a favor before you come today, listen to this. Why? Because I don't want the first time they come, that's the first time they sing something. I want my travel party to be answers to their questions. I want my travel party to be there a little bit interested, but now they want more details. I want them, see, I want, if they're interested, guess what? And they know something they're thinking about doing, they're going to bring their spouse. I don't, I don't want them to say, oh, I, got, I, I should have brought my spouse. No, I want you to bring your spouse. I don't want you to say, oh, I need to go. I love what I see, but I need to go back and talk to my husband. No, see, if I impeach your interest, you're going to bring your husband or your wife. See, I'm trying to help you prevent things that, that happen commonly, and then we go back to say, oh, they're interested, but they're going to go talk. They can't talk to their spouse. How, how are they going to go present it? So listen to me. If they enjoy what they observe, invite them to the next level of exposure. So what I'm saying is this. I'm having a grand opening. I'm putting the date down, but I got a whole bunch of names. So my job is to go through and pique as many people's interests who I know, trust, and invite them, the interested people, to my business reception at my home. Invite interested people to the business meeting. See, guys, most times we think, what well, a travel party, the travel party or the weekly meeting should be the first exposure. It should be the second or third exposure. You invite interested people to your home. You invite interested people to the weekly meeting. Stop just inviting people to the meeting or only inviting people to your home that are not interested. That's the point I need you to get. Now, I'm going to wrap up with this. If you embrace this philosophy, why? If you pique their interest, it's called the Carpenter's Rule. Measure twice, but cut once. Because as we do the presentation, we want people to become your partner. We want them to become your client or refer others to you. As we share the business, we don't want them to say, we don't want this the first time they've ever seen it. So we want them to be interested and know what they're coming for. I want them to know that it's a business. I just want the business to validate what they've seen. See, they saw the sizzle video. They may saw a little five-minute video and they're interested. Guess what? Now they're going to get an understanding. They're going to get the questions answered. I mean, 
So your guest thought should be, you know what, I'm really interested. I'm excited to come out and learn more. I want to come get my questions answered. So guess what? Because you know what something you want to do? I don't want you leaving your checkbook at home. I want you to bring your checkbook. Now, am I explaining all this on the phone call? No. I'm going to tell him, look, I got the perfect person that's coming to do the presentation. This gentleman is, I mean, he used to wait tables. I'm going to sell the story. If Shanaz is doing my presentation, I'm going to sell her story. The young lady, oh, I'm so excited. you got to be here. We're going to have so much fun. You know, as a matter of fact, the young lady who's going to be doing the presentation tonight, you know, she's one of the top earners in the business. But you know what? She used to work in corporate America, you know, a single parent of two children, you know, just time broke. But guys, now because of this business, she's retired. Oh, you got to come hear her story. Really? See, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to give you the overall picture, not just I don't want you to be compartmentalized. I want you to understand that you're still taking this list of names and you're picking people's interest in. The people who are interested, when I, remember I said spend all your time with interested people? You got this list of interested people. Now these interested people you're sending, you're inviting to your travel party. These interested people you're inviting to your home, I mean, or to the weekly presentation. That's the part I need you to hear. Now, let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. Okay. So you make a strong list because some of the people will not be available to attend. Some people will not be interested. You want to invest your time with interested people. Now, guys, if y'all hadn't heard that over and over and over, you want to invest your time with interested people, not try to convince people who are not interested to be interested. Guys, this is really a numbers business. And the sooner you embrace that this is a numbers business, that you can't beat the numbers, the numbers can't beat you, you just got to work the numbers. That's why we've been laying the foundation. Guys, all we're doing is laying the foundation because once you understand this, all we're about to do is run through numbers. We're about to contact a whole bunch of people in a short period of time. Either the people we contact are interested or they're not. We're going we're gonna to know what to invite them on. So if you get them to say, I'm interested, man, that sounds great. I want to know more. You know, pat yourself on the back. Now, let's really wrap this up. Excitement and promotion is the key. Guys, promotion is the key. What do I mean? Your job is to expose as many people as you can to your business. What's your 30-second trailer? Remember we just talked about that? What's your 30 What's your story? Always remember facts tell, but stories sell. Learn to tell your senior business partner. Learn to tell your sidelines, business partner, story. Stories are what draw people in. Stories about other success make people want to know more. Have you ever seen a movie trailer, guys? Whether you've seen Selma or whether you've seen Annie or it's the trailer. They show you the trailer to make you say, ooh, we want to go see that. Why do you think so many kids want to go see a Frozen? Or it's the, It was the trailer. Then when they went, they wanted to see the overall movie. You got to be able to take the big picture and put it in 30 seconds. You got to be able to take the big picture and tell the story. That's why I spent the time up front saying write out your story. Because you got to be able to tell your story, but you also got to be able to tell other people's story. So stories draw people in. Stories about other people's success make them want to know more. You need to edify or build up your leadership by sharing their story. What the business has done for them. Use their story and why you're building your own. Now, support and leadership. Please listen to this. You want to let your prospects, your guests know how important this event is to you. I'm just reiterating what we said earlier. You want to express to want to listen. I, I, got my, I got my senior business partner. I got my mentor in the business coming to help me. If you had that. If not, you know, what, should I, what if I live in another state? I'm going to answer your question and help you too. But by you letting them know that you need to support, what am I saying? Listen, I need you to be here. I need interested people to be here, but I, I, I don't need them when it comes up to them to think. I need them to understand this is very important to me. They need to feel uncomfortable about them just putting it to the side and say, oh, I just got tired. I don't feel like going. No. Uh-uh. Now, flyers and invitations. Ooh, this is good. It's good. Everybody get more focused on the flyer. I got a flyer. I got a flyer. Guys, the flyer, the flyer is nothing but to confirm your guests. The e-blast. E Please listen to me. Stop thinking, I'm just going to send out this flyer to 500 people and they're going to come. It ain't going to happen. That's not an invitation. The flyer is a confirmation, not the invitation. And so many people make the mistake. They take the lazy way out. What they do is they say, oh, I sent out, I sent out this email to all my people. Did you call them? Did you get on the phone and physically call these people? Well, no, but guess what? Then why do you think they're coming? Your guest list, the people you invite, you should have talked to them. You should have invited them. You should have been in a hurry. You should have took it away. You should have showed the value, take it away. Now that you did that, you're letting them know, I don't have a lot of stuff, but I'm inviting you. See, you're, you're, everything we talked about is just coming together. Now, 
I say this truly to understand. When you've done the first part, you've done the proper way of inviting. You was in a hurry. You showed value. You took it away. You piqued their interest. You got them to look at something. Now that they interested, you took interested people. You may have done through it, but now you're inviting them to take a look. Your closing ratio is going to be so much higher. You're inviting interested people to your home. So, yes, you're going to the filtration process. Stop trying to just, I invited all these people. Are they interested? You should have interested people at your home, and you should have interested people at your weekly meeting. So that means there work, there's work that you got to do on the front end. But if you do that and you invite interested people, they're going to more show. They're going to show up because they're interested. You ain't got to worry about them not showing up or saying they're going to come. We say, oh, I got 20 people. Tell me they're coming. And then you say, how many showed up? Well, none of them made it. That's because they were interested. If you got 20 interested people, you're probably going to get 15 to 10. If you just invited 20 people, you're probably going to get three. Now, I said this earlier. But this is a numbers business. You guys, you got to invite more people. Get detached from the personal and understand it's business. If you can envision for me real quick, let's say you're a McDonald's owner. There are millions of cars. I heard somebody say this and it makes so much sense to me. Eric, see, well, there's millions of cars, Renee, that, that drive past McDonald's. But you never see a McDonald's owner in the window just poking, moping and pouting and saying, man, they're just driving by. They focus on the cars that come in the drive through or come in. See, you're focused on the people that come. You ain't focused on the people that don't come. So what am I saying? Understand it's a numbers business. That's why you can invite three times the amount of people you expect to see. Most people are scared, well, if I invite all the people, they ain't going to show. Guys, everybody you invite ain't coming anyway. But listen, you can't beat the numbers. The numbers can't beat you. You got to work the numbers, but don't treat people like numbers. Work the numbers, but don't treat people like numbers. So normally if you invite 10 people and you get 10 people today coming, expect three. Now, these are the numbers. You can't beat the numbers. The numbers can't beat you. I don't want you to be disappointed. Oh, it ain't working. It is working. See, once you understand it's just a numbers business and you get detached from the nose, you get detached from the emotion, guys, it's just numbers. It's not personal. It's business. But listen to me. You invite the people. You invite Shutter. Hey, can you come do my travel party? Or, or, or Jackie, can you come do my travel party? If you do the work, I don't mind. Now, how do I know if you did the work? Because I should be doing three ways in the week leading up to the travel party. Don't just tell me we have a travel party and I want you to come, but you ain't did the work leading up to. See, you got to send me a guest list. If you don't send me a guest list, let's say your travel party is Saturday. On Thursday, I need your guest list. If I ain't got your guest list, I might reschedule because you're asking me to dedicate my time, but you ain't doing your part. So that's why I said understand. Don't be misled or deceived. I don't want to waste my time. See, I look at it like this. If I invite Mr. Bradley to come to my home, and do a travel party. He could be spending time with thousands of other thousands of people, but he's going to set it up on his counter. At least I can do is make sure I do my part to make sure that it's filled with the right type of people. I don't care about the refreshments and all that. That ain't the goal. The goal is, listen, I want to do an event, and I want to invite my sponsor, this person, to come help me. But guess what? There's work you got to do prior to it, and I need us to understand that. Now, everybody else may not, but y'all need to understand this. So gaining perspective, I'm going to read these last two paragraphs, and this is it. Think about this way. Guys, if you have a New Year's Eve party, would you only invite three people? No. Would you only invite five people if you're getting married? No. So why, when you got your grand opening, you just want, I got three people coming? Really? I ain't know ain't nobody coming. And, and you disappointed like you found like this ain't working. You didn't invite enough people. So your guest list should be no less than 30 names. You did, you did 200, you did 150, you don't think you can get 30 people to invite? But guess what? You need to be, get busy creating your guest list. You, guess what? You need to go through your phone. You need to go through your church directory. You need to go and create, be excited about your new business. When you talk to people, you should be excited. You should pique their interest through excitement. They want to know why are you so excited. They don't mind taking a look at the little video or five minutes. Now they're interested. Now on a scale of one to 10, what number would you give yourself? I'm inviting interested people to my travel party. I'm inviting interested people to my event. So, guys, listen, your leader's time is precious and valuable. So is yours. But, no, we all are in the same. We, our goal is we want to help you in. We want, if we're going to do it, we might as well do it, be it. So I just want to show this to you briefly because now the whole purpose was I wanted to go over travel parties. I didn't have a chance to put that into a presentation. So I just wanted to go over um, – Travel parties. What I'm going to do is take questions. Um, 